And a very good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Gordon Bennett 62. This is the end of the night glow we've just seen. And I'm joined on the line by Swiss 2 headquarters, Vincent Bojan. Hello, Vincent. How are you? Oh, very fine. And you? Very well, indeed. Thank you. We've just had the night glow here with a full packed crowd and a great atmosphere. Beautiful, beautiful evening. So uh, tell me, tell me about the day amongst the Swiss Two team. What's the uh, what's the what's the story? <laughs> well, we we have been pretty busy by analyzing all the the different possibility and possible trajectories uh, that we can follow. Because uh, uh, as every team has seen, there is quite a lot of uh, meteorological. Uh, uh, uncertainties and uh, so it's it's make the difficult the prediction of trajectories for the for the long term so we we have really uh, playing a lot in order to uh, to find the best trajectories and uh, the location right now of the team Vincent? Uh well i'm just at the office now and uh, but right now they are heading in, uh, to the to the west and uh, the position is uh, is in france so uh, going to 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 the coast and have you um, had communication with the team have you spoke to them in the last hour or so yes yes they are very very fine and uh, they are very they're just great guys and so they they are really uh, uh, positive and uh, and uh, so they take all the uh, everything with a very nice humor and uh, a very nice uh, uh, there is a very nice atmosphere inside the inside the basket of the of the balloon and what would you say is the plan for the next couple of hours in the balloon will they have eaten dinner as yet or is that still to come ah uh, so far we don't know uh, we don't know it uh, this is something that they manage by by themselves and uh, but we will have a um, uh, uh, meeting uh, a briefing in uh, in one hour or so and Vincent, the temperatures are dropping here on the ground. They must be dropping up there in the balloon as well. Tell me and explain to the people watching just some details about the clothing and the warm, uh, the warm clothing and the, and the situation for keeping warm during the night with these pilots. Mm -hmm. Well, that's uh, that's sometimes a problem. It's, it's really depending on the on the height and the altitude where you where you are, and so sometimes you are in altitudes when you really have too much warm inside the in uh, inside the balloon. So you need to protect against the heat, and sometimes you are uh, higher, and so it's another story. So then you you start to to have cold. So you really need to have. Uh, uh, all the different materials in order to to insulate you and in order to pull as much as possible because of course it's uh, it's quite uh, it's it's quite difficult to be to be on the air so it's really it's you need really to get prepared to 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 it and could you and tell me a bit about the eating schedule would it be just snacks throughout the day or do they take time for a meal Oh yes, they they take time to uh, to enjoy a meal together and uh, and uh, so really this well you know in Switzerland we like to to take time to uh, to um, to enjoy uh, some some moments in the especially eating and uh, also uh, uh, drinking something and uh, sharing ideas and so on so it's it's part of our philosophy. And this team, Swiss Two, how long have you been associated with them? Uh, we started to work years ago, and 
uh, at this time uh, we we didn't know anything about uh, about a balloon and uh, and uh, they convinced us to uh, to start investigating and uh, getting interest into it and now we are really passionate because we discovered so many very interesting things about the physics of the of the balloon and uh, so we started from the physics and then we 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 tried to uh, to to develop things that could help them in the in the uh, in the way that the pilot and uh, well we just our mission is really to to assist them to to for, for safety and also for um, for understanding better the the dynamics of the balloon and to uh, and to find good ways to to handle it. And could you tell the people watching uh, your, your history in aviation for yourself personally? Oh, I'm, since I was a kid, I was always passionate with uh, it's a passion with aviation, and I wanted to be to be a pilot. And then I started to build uh, small airplanes, remote controlled, and uh, I enjoy building the airplanes. So. I started to make engineering uh, studies in order to learn how to to build uh, airplanes, and uh, so that's my uh, formations. And after I worked a lot on uh, uh, underground on the, um, uh, underground uh, systems, transportation systems, which were associated with the, um, with the uh, aircraft technologies. And uh, so this is, it comes really from a passion, everything that flies really interests me and attracts me. So, uh, and I need to know how, how it works and uh, uh, how we can build it and uh, stuff like that. So with all the research you've been doing into the flight and the balloons, you maybe don't want to give away too many secrets, but what has been the exciting developments in your eyes? I would say that the interesting uh, things about balloon, you, you know, when uh, many people think that balloon, balloon is uh, is really the first transportation system, aerial transportation system in, in the world historically. So it's it it has really launched the the conquest of the air, and many people think that uh, uh, it is uh, old technology, and uh, so there is not much in interest in studying too much uh, airplanes can do so much better but uh, if you look carefully um, it's uh, on the physics side it's very interesting because uh, you cannot neglect any effects so you really work work a tough physics uh, in order to understand the behavior of balloons. So this is a first, I would say, scientific interest. And if you look at, um, if you look at uh, balloons in an energy, um, uh, we speak a lot about energy and we would like to, to save energy and so on. But uh, balloons uh, are really uh, do not consume uh, anything. So they just um, so it's a category that is very interesting from an energetic point of view. So, uh, and of course, if you uh, if you consider it today with knowledge that we have today, and the possibility that um, we can uh, we can develop some technologies that could be helpful to uh, to use balloons in a certain way or to develop things which can be hybrids between balloons and other transportation systems and in order to reduce the energy consumption of aerial transport. Maybe we are heading towards a time of a hybrid with drones and balloons. Do you foresee that as being a possibility? Mm -hmm. Yes, because if you look at uh, drones, uh, they are really based on the, on the principle of, uh, of an helicopter and uh, uh, the vertical flight uh, using uh, an helicopter or jet engine or whatever, uh, you use a lot, a lot of energy. And uh, with the balloon, is you have the Archimedes um, force, which uh, helps you, which is pr practically free. Of course, you end up with a big vessel and uh, and you have the disadvantage of this big vessel so you, you cannot uh, it's not for fast transportation but if you look um, the more 
also transportation of freight goods are made by ships and ships also use Archimedes uh, force so it's um, I would say it's quite uh, it's quite interesting it's it's a way um, that is worth uh, digging into because probably we can uh, we, we can develop something interesting it's it could really uh, change um, uh, change the way we think transportation great ideas and a fascinating story that we will keep our eyes on Vincent I want to thank you for your time this evening I know you have a team meeting to get to but from everybody watching online and from all of us here down on the field thank you very much and good evening thank you very much and have a nice evening